Hi there, I'm Jim, and thanks for checking out this video. Today I'm painting one of the Death Tide Jurigen from Artisan Guild. I'll be posting follow-up videos for painting this entire range, but today we're starting with the High Tide Jurigen. I will be using these models for D&D and intend on using them as the Sahuagin. I've primed this entire set McCrag Blue. However, this particular model will be painted in a white and red skin colour scheme. I purchased this particular range of models from Warrior Prince 3D on Etsy, though he does offer discounts if you message him directly on Instagram, I'll put the links below. Firstly, I need to base coat the model. I'm going to start with Mephiston Red, thin it down slightly with water and cover all of the skin areas. Once dried, I'll go over the skin again with Mephiston Red, but the second coat will be watered down with a 50-50 mix to ensure that the paint pools in the deep recesses. All the paints and brands used will be in the top left hand corner of the video as I'm using them. Next is the armour. He doesn't have much, but I'll be painting all of the plate sections along with his belt and wristbands Phoenician purple. Although Phoenician purple is a base paint, it requires three coats due to its consistency. Then I'm going to paint the base in Baylor Brown. This will need multiple coats as Baylor Brown is a layer paint and it doesn't cover up blue very well. Once thinned, with a little water, I'll need to apply this three times. If you've primed your models in a less strong color, you may not need to use so much. Next up is the Kelp Loincloth with some Caliban Green. Then I'm onto the hooked weapons, painting these with two coats of storm vermin fur. Next I paint the plank he's standing on. Using Proacryl Ivory, followed up with Garagax Sewer, I use two coats of each. Now I'm taking some packing sponge and I've stuffed it into one of the little plastic tubes you get on a paintbrush and with it I'm going to sponge on a stipple effect using Jean Steeler Purple. Now I'm ready to stipple on the Carla Lilac as the next highlight colour, but I need to remove the Jean Steeler Purple sponge section first. Stippling the Carla Lilac on lighter than the previous colour, I hope to create a similar scheme to the Sahuagin armour shown in the Monster Manual. Due to the size of the model and stippling with a sponge, I've gotten a lot of paint over the red skin, so I'm going back with the fist and red to clean up those areas carefully.
and with one coat we can see that the red skin cleanup is complete. Now I want to build some more shadows in the armour using shyish purple contrast paint in the recesses and also applying it over the rivets on the armour. Once complete, it's given the armour a lot more definition. My next base coat is going to be for the claws. I really wasn't sure how to paint these up, so I painted them with Cantor Blue and Corn Red. I made sure to do this quickly so that I could wet blend the two colours together. And sorry for the dodgy camera work here. I was rushing to get the paint on the model before it dried, and my placement suffered for it. Once both colours are down on the model, I take more of each and just mush them together, overlapping each side. With a damp brush, I start pulling both paints back and forth over each other to create the blend. Next, taking Rakarth Flesh, I paint over all the sections of the skin I want to be white, picking out the belly, underarms, inner legs and neck. With the base coats complete, you can see that the white really helps break up the overpowering red colour. Now I take some of that leftover Rekarth flesh and I paint the webbing on the head, arms and tail of the model. It's time to start layering and highlighting the skin using Evil Sun Scarlet. I'll go over the entirety of the model's skin, leaving the recesses of the muscles and undersides Mephiston Red. While layering up the skin, I water down Evil Sun Scarlet with a 50-50 mix, and I start blending between the white skin and the red skin to get better transitions. I purposely place the brush into the white skin and drag it back into the red. I do this two to three times over each section, working over a smaller and smaller gap.
I decided not to chop up this section of the video too much, as layering and glazing is an important painting method to learn, and one thing I've noticed from YouTube painting is sometimes it's only covered only briefly from start to finish, but it's a core cool step in going from intermediate to advanced mini painting, and it's something I've been using more and more to get the desired blends and effects that I want. I'd also appreciate any feedback you have on this video. This is my first time on YouTube, and although there's some editing and camera angles that are sloppy now, this will get progressively better. Here is one of the other jurikin I painted in a blue scheme, and you can see the finished transition between white to blue skin colour. Now, on to our next highlight. These are going to be small and more precise, picking up the raised edges of the skin using Wild Rider Red, although it's very close to an orange. At this point, a lot of the skin was coming across really bright, and I wanted to mute it ever so slightly. So using Blood Angel's Contrast with a 50-50 mix with water, I apply this all over the red skin. Then going back to Wild Rider Red, to re-highlight some of the most prominent areas, such as the face. This is another 50-50 mix with water. Due to the small areas we're covering, make sure to dab your brush onto some kitchen paper to take away a lot of the moisture, so it doesn't run rampant over the areas. With the skin mostly complete, I move on to the weapons, taking more glass bone, 50-50 mixed with water, and removing the moisture onto some kitchen paper, I glaze and layer up the edges of the weapon that would be sharper and catch more light. I drag my paintbrush from the areas that would be darker into those sharp corners, all over both the weapons multiple times. The first layer is complete.
In the second layer, you can see I've built up more towards those edges each time. And the third layer, you can now see the shine coming off those raised areas while the shadows still look dark. Now taking Pro Acryl Ivory, I'm going to carefully edge highlight all of the weapons. I start with a small brush here, but I'll later go back to a slightly bigger brush that would hold more paint. Now with that edge highlight complete, I do the same for the second weapon with that larger brush. I'm a little more liberal with the ivory highlight at the top of this weapon. This is because the model's weapon is raised to the highest point where I think it would catch more light. Next, I'm going to take some Agrax Earthshade, mixed 50-50 with water, and paint this carefully into the weapon's recesses.
As I've still got some thinned Agrax Earth shade on my palette, I'm going to use it to darken down the skin's recesses a little bit, being very careful to make sure I don't go any of the raised muscle. It was at this point I realised I hadn't based the weapon's wraps yet, so I painted these scrag brown. Now I take some Fire Dragon Bright and I start highlighting the webbing on the skin but decide later just to paint all of it Fire Dragon Bright instead. Here I forgot to record the painting of the eyes in Pro Acryl's Ivory. This was two thin coats. Next, I pick up the teeth using more gas bone. I started carefully but then covered all of the teeth due to impatience. I used two coats. Then I used a wash of Agrax Earthshade to pick out the teeth details I covered up and I also used it to darken the inner mouth. I use striking green scorpion contrast paint to fill the eyes. For the next step, I'm going to pick out all of the shells on his armour and base with Stormhost Silver. And I'm also going to pick out the rivets on his armour, belt and braces with Screaming Bell.
Using Rakar Flesh, I'm going to paint all of the limpets on the armour and base. And to bring out more detail in the limpets, I'm going to give them a light wash of Agrax Earthshade. I also use this wash on the weapon straps. Then, still using Agrax Earthshade, I carefully line the sand on the base to help break the colours up and give them the definition between the sandy levels. Now, with a 50-50 mix of Proacryl Ivory and Morgast Bone, I paint the edges of the teeth. Next, taking Apothecary White, I paint all of the metallic shells. This, I think, really helps the pearly shell effect. Back to Ivory White, I carefully run the brush over the tips of the limpets to help bring out those edges. Now, continuing with Ivory, I pick out all of the raised white skin areas. Now I'm going to use Rakarth Flesh to try and blend those transitions from the ivory back into the original Rakarth Flesh colour.
time to work on the claws. I had been putting them off, but they were the last stage to this model, and I needed something flashy. I started by glazing Wild Rider Red over all of the corn areas, with a 3 to 1 water to paint mix. Make sure you wipe the tip of your brush off on some kitchen paper to remove the excess water, leaving behind just diluted pigment. I did 3 coats of Wild Rider Red. Now, I do the same for the blue side, but with Calador Sky. Building the layers further, I now glaze in Baharoth Blue onto the edges of the blue pincers. Now doing the same again for the red side, I glaze in phalanx yellow into the edges of the claws. And with that, the claws are complete. We still have a little bit more to do to help flesh out those final details. I'll start with a wet blend of moot green into caliban green on the kelp loincloth. I laid out moot green and caliban green on my palette and I mix the two together with a little water and then apply just moot green to the bottom of the kelp. Then while still wet I applied the mixed green to the middle and then the caliban green to the top. Make sure you do this for both sides of the model.
I then went back to Moot Green and I touched up the edges of the kelp loincloth. Using a moist brush, I then wiped in between where each colour met to help feather out those colours together so that they blend easier. Last but not least, I paint the base rim Abaddon Black. If you got this far, thank you so much for watching. Please leave a comment about what you liked and didn't like so that I can implement this into my next video. If you want to see something in particular painted, let me know and maybe I'll order it for another video. Thanks.